We welcome to the desk our good friend, uh, Iowa bankruptcy attorney Mike Jenkins here, and we've been talking bankruptcy over the past several months. And uh, there are some things that people have a tendency to do more often than not that end up in a visit with your in your office. We're talking about habits that people have that aren't necessarily the good kind of habits. Yeah, I think uh, today I want to talk about things where people, if they change the way they live, can avoid seeing me. So I don't know if this talk is really good for business today, but uh, <laughs> it'll be good for you. Well, look, we, we get out of school, and in a lot of cases, you know, even high school, and maybe it's not their responsibility, it's probably not, but there are people that get out of high school, don't know how to balance a checkbook, don't know how a credit card works, don't know how a bank, you know what I mean? And, and so in some cases, we're just not financially literate. You get out in the real world and then a lot of this stuff starts to happen. Well, and I think it is um, kind of important for the schools to teach the students these things. I mean, it's good to teach math and science and English, but it also uh, needs to teach something so a person becomes equipped to live in this world that they're uh, teaching you to uh, go forward Especially in. Especially now in this digital world where everything is going to be on that card or on your phone or that's how you're going to pay for things and manage your money. So what are some habits that we should watch out for? Well, one of the big things I always like to say is uh, the usage of credit cards. Um, the people generally do not use credit cards the way they were intended to be used. Um, people will have a full wallet or purse full of credit cards. I mean, you can unravel the card holder and all of a sudden there's six, seven, eight cards and, and they all got balances on them. And um, really, if you have one Visa or MasterCard and maybe a department store card for Yonkers or Dillard's or whatever your favorite department store you like to get your clothes at, you know, that's fine. Uh, but it's still, even with those limited cards, doesn't mean you should go rack up and have your Citibank with $10,000 on it and your Yonkers card with $5,000. You won't even pay for those clothes by the time they're worn out. Mm. And uh, people just have this habit of paying the minimum balance because it says that's all I got to pay. So that means I got more uh, weekend spending money because I only pay the minimum. But paying the minimum on these cards isn't going to ever get them paid off. And the problem is most people that use credit cards don't just have one Visa and one Yonkers card. Uh, they'll have several Visa and MasterCards and maybe Discover and American Express. And they'll have Victoria's Secret and Yonkers and Sam's Club and Walmart. And they all have balances. And they're not balances of five or six hundred dollars. I mean, some of them will have ten thousand, eight thousand. They may have some signature loan that they got or line of credit at Wells Fargo, and there's another 5000 on it. And so all these minimum payments are being made, and people are sitting out there paying 1000 a month, $1,500 a month on these kind of revolving accounts. Mm -hmm. And they don't have that kind of money. Right. Now, when it comes to cards like this, you mentioned the credit cards. Would it be in someone's best interest to not have a so-called credit card but have a debit card instead? Well, debit cards are certainly good. Um, they're as good as the money that you've got in the bank to back them. Um, for many people, that's not going to be sufficient. Otherwise, they won't be able to go buy the stuff they want to buy all the time. And I think that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to just buy things and keep buying them without worrying about whether they can pay for them later. It's buy now, worry about paying for them sometime. And um, it, people can manage and juggle the payments for a while. But then if something happens in life that's unexpected, like layoff from a job, termination from a job, somebody's off of work because of sickness or injury where they're off several months, um, wife gets pregnant and is uh, not at work for a few months or doesn't go back to work at all, uh, these balances are still there and they still got to be paid. So then they're calling me up on the phone after they saw me on Great Day saying, hey, I think I need to file bankruptcy. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need help. Right. And it's just not a good idea to put yourself in these positions because you just shouldn't keep building up balances on credit cards. Uh, really, in the way I, at least the way I live my life, is I charge things on my credit card, and at the end of the month I pay for them, and so I carry no balances, and I don't worry about the interest rates that are 18% or 15%. That's really expensive use of cash to pay interest on that money. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just no reason to be building up all these balances. And then I talked to somebody the other day, and uh, they says to me, well, I was out of work. Uh, I got injured at work, and so I was only receiving reduced pay, and so I had to live on my credit cards. And that's a common thing, too. Mm -hmm. But you can't live on your credit cards. They weren't intended to be able to do that, because then once you start back to work, 
you can't afford to pay those credit cards back right. because you never had that kind of debt when you were working full time mm -hmm. and now you're sitting on twenty five or thirty thousand dollars of debt running at probably an average fifteen percent interest rate and you just can't afford to pay it. And this so is an important me. message now. You've got a lot of kids who are going off to college, going to college for the first time, and I don't know what it's like now, but when I went to college, you'd walk into the student union and there were tables everywhere, all the different credit card companies trying to get you to sign up. Then you come out of college with student loan debt and credit card debt, and you're in a big trouble for you know, years and years because of that. That's true, and it's very tempting. I mean, when I was in college, um, it, you know, you don't have very little money to live on, mm -hmm. and so you're squeaking by, you know, you want to go on a date, you're sitting there scrounging around, do I have 10 bucks to go take a girl out? <laughs> right. And uh, so, but now there's credit cards, and uh, well, I can do anything I want. You get this credit card, you know, I want to go a movie, I want to go to see uh, Iowa State play or go to the Iowa game, it doesn't matter, it's gonna cost me 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, you just put it on the credit card, and enjoy yourself while you're in college. But then uh, after three or four years of college or five years of college, all of a sudden you come out and besides graduation, you're sitting on $25,000 of credit card debt. Right. And it's just so difficult. Uh, you're starting your uh, working life in a big hole. And that's, like you say, in addition to paying your student loans back. And, and those things are going thirty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. Wow! And it, it's just a tough hole so to dig out. So misuse of credit cards are on the top of your list. Number one. Number um, one. One that I've got at the bottom of my list that I prepared today, but I think probably should be number two on the list is got to have health insurance. Um, for many people, it was unattainable to have health insurance. But as many b bad things as you hear about people complaining about Obamacare, this and that. It's made it so health insurance is available for those that need it and uh, should get it. And if your income's low, uh, the government will pay part of it so that you can afford it. Now, that means you may not be able to spend $150 a month on cigarettes anymore because you may have to make some life choices. Mm -hmm. Do I want to still smoke or do I want to have health insurance? But I mean, health insurance for many people where it was impossible to get, it can be gotten now. And it's just so crucial to have it because if you don't have it and something happens, you get really sick, uh, you have an appendix attack or a gallbladder attack and something's got to come out, you, you're going to come out of the hospital with a $20,000 bill. Right. And you can't afford That's it. That's true. I never yeah. thought about that. And it ruined yeah. that. And if you have insurance, at least uh, you're going to be able to manage afterwards the co-pays or the deductible or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot better than $20,000. Wow. Right. All right. So people want to get any more, uh, any more tips for, actually, this is really bizarre saying this, but <laughs> tips of how to stay out of your office, Mike, but that's not necessarily <laughs> the case. Here's what you do. You just jump online, uh, info at iowabankruptcylaw.com or your phone number, Mike. Or you can give me a call at 255-1855. I'm happy to answer your questions on the phone and we can schedule you for a free consultation. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Again, be careful.